Hi everyone, um, I hope you're well. This is part two of my conservation A-level biology videos. And this one is going to specifically look at exam style questions. And it is also going to give you some tips and it's going to give you some support uh, in terms of your exam technique. Okay, so as it says here, we're going to look at how you evaluate data. First of all, we're going to um, look at description of data, sorry. But as it says there in the blue box, it says in your exam, you will need to evaluate any evidence or data about conservation projects. So I've got a um, project here. Um, this is a made up one. Um, but I will read through it. So it says, in recent years, native British bluebells have become less common in woodland areas. It's thought this is due to the presence of non-native Spanish bluebells, which competes with the native species for a similar niche and are capable of breeding with the native species to produce a hybrid. An experiment was carried out to see if removing the invasive Spanish species would help to conserve the, uh, the native species. Each year for 15 years, the percentage cover of native species was estimated in a 50 by 50 meter area of woodland using random sampling and 250 one meter squared quadrats. After five years, all the Spanish bluebells were removed and then a similar sized control woodland in which the Spanish bluebells re remained untouched was also studied. So the results are shown below. So what they've done here is they've told you um, in terms of the invasiveness, invasiveness of Spanish bluebells. And they've also told you about an experimental technique. So more than likely, they're going to ask you questions about the validity of this uh, experiment. So what I'm going to ask you to do in a minute is a task, but I'm just going to talk, talk briefly about um, what the questions mean. So number one says describe the data in figure one and two. So uh, this is actually going to be uh, a four mark question. So you're going to have to use the data in your answer. So they expect you to analyze both graphs and you need to mention data. The second thing that it's going to ask you is to draw conclusions. Now, in terms of this specific example, we need to understand, well, what was the result of removing the Spanish bluebells? Because that was the purpose of this experiment. It was looking at uh, what happens when you remove the invasive species on uh, the numbers of native British bluebells. And then thirdly, going to evaluate the method. So they've given you lots of information on the method. Uh, in terms of evaluation, you need to talk about the pros and cons uh, of the method used. So, you, for example, they mentioned a control experiment. They mentioned the size of study area. They mentioned the number of quadrats and also about eliminating bias. Do they talk about eliminating bias? Yes, they do. They say random sampling. So um, in a second, I'm going to ask you to look at the questions and then have a go at them. OK, so what I would like you to do now is to answer those three questions. And I'd like you in a minute to pause the video. Once it's paused, uh, write down your answers and then press play once you have your answers. It's really important you do that, please. OK, so for the first question, it says describe the data. So if we look at the data, we can um, talk about both figure one and figure two. So figure one, for the first five years, the percentage cover of native bluebells fell from around about 50 percent to 25 percent. After the Spanish species was removed, it increased from around 25 percent to 45 percent. And that was over a 10 year period. And then figure two, during the control experiment, it shows a fairly steady drop in native bluebell percentage cover from 60% to 20% over the 15 year period. So now we come to drawing conclusions. Well, basically, the removal of Spanish bluebells resulted in an increase in the percentage cover of native bluebells over a 10 year period. So this suggests that the recent decrease in native British bluebells is due to competition with the Spanish bluebells. I probably would add as well, you would know you um, the control does show 
the effects of the invasiveness of Spanish bluebells in reducing the native bluebell population. And lastly, evaluating the method. Well, uh, there are quite a few different points here. So the effects of some other variables were removed by the control experiment. So where the percentage cover of native bluebells continued to fall. So this take, makes the test more valid. It shows that the Spanish uh, bluebell is having an effect on the native bluebell population. And uh, the study area and sample sizes were quite large. OK, so 50 by 50 well, 50 meters squared is quite a large area. So that will give you more accurate data. And also random sampling would reduce bias. So the data is more likely to be ac an accurate estimate of the whole area. In terms of um, the cons of it, you could argue um, that 15 years uh, was a limited amount of time uh, for the looking at populations of bluebells. There might have been some other factors. For example, we don't have any data on soil conditions, on weather conditions, um, or other biotic or abiotic factors that may affect uh, the native British bluebell um, population. So that gives you an idea of how you would go about evaluating uh, unfamiliar data that is given to you. OK, so now I'm going to give you some questions to have a look at. OK, so this is seven, eight, nine marks. So this is going to take you about 10 minutes. It's usually a mark a minute, but obviously you've got to look at the information. So what I suggest you do is you set yourself a stopwatch on your mobile phone or on your computer for 10 minutes. And I'd like you to have a really good go at this question. So if you could pause and I'll see you soon. OK, so hopefully that is 10 minutes. If it's not, I'm going to insist you go back. OK, so you need to go back and you need to try these questions, please. Right. OK, let's have a look at the answers. So this was about uh, grazing and it was about uh, succession of an area of grassland that can result in forest. So they're looking at uh, ways that they can actually uh, conserve the steppe landscape, which is the grassland, uh, by different methods of control through grazing, mowing and fire. So question one, describe what the results show about the effectiveness of the three methods of managing uh, succession. So as you can see, you need to talk about in comparison, you need to talk about the areas controlled by grazing and fire have the highest percentage cover of grasses compared to the control. The areas controlled by fire have the lowest percentage cover of trees. Mowing was the least successful method for conserving grassland. Um, and as it had the lowest percentage cover of grasses and the highest percentage of trees. So in, in that answer, um, you can see that the answers have been qualified. So you're describing the data, but you're qualifying it as well. So you're not just saying one thing, you're saying how it relates to that question about the effectiveness. As it says here, top tip, if you're being asked to compare the effect, effectiveness of something, always make sure you know what the aim of the method is. And the aim of the method is to increase the amount of steppe grassland. B, suggest two advantages of controlling succession by grazing than fire. Again, suggest there could be many answers usually they're common sense they might not be things that you've been directly taught but in this case grazing is less dangerous than fire particularly if there are other species around or if there are uh, buildings around also grazing causes less harm to other species than fire and then question two it talks about the saiga antelope i apologize if i've pronounced that incorrectly but it's an endangered species living in the area and it talks about hunting by local people for meat and for its horns. And it says, suggest why education programs and developing alternative livelihoods for the local people could be a useful part of the effort to conserve the antelope. So it's about the conflict between the needs of local people and the conservation aim of, of protecting the antelope. 
um, educating local people of not hunting the um, antelope at unsustainable levels and alternative sources of income will result in fewer antelope being killed so this means they're not hunted to extinction and will still be able to be a source of food and income in the future please do check your answers and maybe add or improve your answers uh, from this mark scheme okay this next question is an example of what we call applying the uh, your knowledge and uh, looking at application of data so this one um, again what i would like you to do is to pause and i will say please do pause for about 10 minutes and again i'd like you to put your answers so read the question carefully you could use a highlighter if you've printed it out you can highlight it uh, but i'd like you to try and use uh, the example uh, the examples that i've spoken about about describing evaluating drawing conclusions and also remember suggest meaning that there are many answers okay thank you okay so i hope you have tried those questions if you haven't i'm going to say pause and go back right so let's move on so let's have a look at the answers to this question before you do though look at the top tip so for questions asking you to suggest an answer you do need to use your common sense so these are things you wouldn't have been taught uh, you won't have been taught by your teacher that specific answer so what i'd like you to do is to go through all of the answers and again improve your work so what i would do is pause the video now okay so next couple of questions i'm going to show you are kind of parts of exam questions now in your exam they probably won't just give you a conservation exam question they usually combine it with some other topic um, in this case uh, they can give you well can give you any information they like so this one is about looking at the data they've given you so it says ecologists investigated succession in some abandoned crop fields the data they collected are shown in the graph the curve shows the trends that occurred over a period of 60 years so if we look at the data over 60 years you can see the percentage cover of bare soil decreases that's be probably because of the percentage cover of woody plants initially though there's many smaller annual plants um, obviously decreasing as percentage cover of woody plants increases and you can see the soil nit nitrate concentrations increasing over time as well and it says the question conservation of grassland habitats involves management of succession use the data in the graph to explain why so the first thing i would do is look at the graph and it does say grassland habitats now it doesn't mention grass however it does mention small annual plants that is going to be the grassland and as you can see over time the percentage cover of small annual uh, plants in other words grassland habitats has decreased okay whereas the percentage cover of woody plants has increased so it does say use the data so it says conservation of grassland habitats involves management of succession use the data to explain why so as i said the woody plants are actually replacing or outcompeting the small annual plants so therefore if you're going to uh, do manage succession you're going to have to remove the woody plants okay or you could use grazing techniques but mainly you're going to be removing those woody plants because less woody plants would increase the number of small annual plants such as grassland this question uh, gives you lots of information and lots of data this is actually part of a larger question so there's there's probably too much data here for this particular question uh, but i'd like you to read the question carefully and have a look at the data because sometimes you're going to need to analyze data notice they're talking about standard deviations so you need to be aware about standard deviation of the mean so you need to be able to uh, evaluate that information and understand whether it's significantly different or whether there's some form of overlap so there's no difference between whatever they're looking at 
Okay, so the question is about grassy strips around the edges of fields of crops. Let's look at the question. So it says a summary of this research was published in a farming magazine. The journalist concluded that creating grassy strips around fields had little effect on the diversity of soil animals. And it asks you, do you agree with this conclusion? And then secondly, use evidence from the table to justify your answer. There is four marks available. So again, I'd like you to pause and see if you can answer this question. Okay, so the first thing to state is it doesn't talk about standard deviation in the question. So you can mention as a principle about standard deviation. So the key thing is, is the overlap of the two times SD show standard deviation shows probability of differences and the means being due to chance is greater than 0.95. So you can actually state that, that if there's overlap of the, the two times SD, then it's not significant. Whether you agree or disagree, well, do, it's, it's an evaluative uh, comment, so agree. So there's no difference in the numbers of earthworms and millipedes. If you look at the data, there's no difference in the number of species of centipedes and or millipedes. However, there are more beetles and wood lice in the grassy strips, and there is more species of beetle, earthworms and wood lice in the grassy strips. So that's all you need to do. You need to look at the data, you need to look at the standard deviations and try and work out the answers from the data. So that question is not necessarily talking about conservation. It is about conservation, but also is testing other aspects. So you get the idea of what I mean by using the keywords evaluate or conclude or use data or use evidence, okay? And that comes up quite a lot on this section of work. Right, so that's the end of the exam practice. I hope you found it useful. Um, please do subscribe if you haven't already to Dr. Biology and 